it's Anna here from Disrupt Tutoring and as always it's such a pleasure to join you. Today we're going to be answering a grade 8 natural sciences energy and change question taken from the November 2015 Hatsuga Middle School exam paper. So let's have a look. The question reads, explain why a child's hair stands up after playing inside the plastic tube. And just above the question is a diagram of the plastic tube and the child that's been playing inside of it with their hair standing on end. So before we actually try and answer this specific question, first of all, we know that it has something to do with static electricity and some key concepts to keep in the back of our mind is that first of all, all matter is made up of atoms and atoms are composed of electrons, which are negatively charged, protons, positively charged and neutrons, which are neutral. Second of all, we know that static electricity is an imbalance of charge on or inside of a material. And third of all, we know that opposites attract. This also counts or applies to charges. The opposite charges attract, positive and negative charges attract. And it also follows that like charges will repel. Okay. So now that we know this, we can therefore answer the question and say that the friction caused between the two bodies rubbing against each other, that is the child and the slide, as the child is sliding down the tube, causes a transfer of electrons between the two bodies. Okay, so that's the first part of the answer. And the child's hair, the hair strands rather, gain negatively charged electrons, and once they are all the same charge, they repel, giving the standing on end effect. Okay, so it's also important to remember that only the electrons get transferred between the bodies. The protons and the neutrons do not get transferred, okay? So it is the transfer of electrons between the two caused by the friction which causes the child's hair to stand on end after playing inside the plastic tube. Alright, let's move on to the next part of the question. The question reads, look at the image below and answer the questions that follow. What we're looking at here is a person who's touching a metal doorknob and has got it in zap and a spark has been created. Okay, what causes an electric spark? So, a transfer of surplus electrons from the person's hand, which were accumulated, let's say they were walking on a carpet or maybe when they were walking they were rubbing against their clothing. Remember, friction causes a transfer of electrons. So, a transfer of surplus electrons from the hand to the least charged doorknob causes the zap. The spark occurs when the surface buildup of electrons from the hand reaches a critical maximum and they discharge in a jump, a jumping sort of motion. So the key concepts here is that the critical maximum is reached, and the electrons are transferred from the more, po more charged hand to the less charged doorknob. Okay, and that is what causes the electric spark. Again, here we're talking about static electricity. Okay. Question 1.2.2 asks, when do sparks caused by electric static electricity become harmful? The first instance is when you're in the vicinity of flammable gases or excess oxygen. Because a spark can ignite these gases and cause an explosion. And we'll give you a bonus answer as well. When you touch something that has a high po high charge of electricity, for example, an electri electricity transformer. This can cause you to get an electric shock, which can stop your heart from beating. So that's also another dangerous instance of static electricity. All right, and then the last part of this question asks us to list two ways to prevent a person from being struck by struck by lightning. So it's important when you hear a thunderstorm approaching. To avoid contact or when it's actually raining and there's a thunderstorm, avoid contact with water and electrical appliances or objects that conduct electricity because this increases the chance of you getting struck by lightning. Okay, You must also go indoors or seek shelter immediately at the first sound of a thunderstorm. It would be ideal to seek shelter in a building with an electric electricity rod or lightning conductor which would conducts the electrons uh, released by lightning down straight into the ground. But if you can't go indoors, seek an appropriate shelter. Please don't go hide underneath a lone tree, for example, because that still increases the chance of 
being struck by lightning. Also, don't be the tallest object around. That's why you need to go indoors or seek shelter immediately. And a bonus answer as well. Minimize your contact with the ground. Don't lie flat on the ground because electricity can be transmitted through the wires inside the inside the concrete and you can still get an electric shock or be or be struck by the lightning and don't lie flat on concrete floors and if you have to crouch down if you have to be close to the ground crouch down rather than lying flat on the ground so that you minimize your contact with the ground and therefore increase your chances of not being struck by lightning all right so that was some interesting stuff on electricity particularly static electricity and i hope you've learned a thing or two so but before i go i'd like to say thank you to your epic sponsor for making this video possible please read about them in the description provided also remember you can find more of these epic tutorial videos on our website and if you can't find the answer to your question send it to us and we will respond with a personalized video just for you and until the next time stay epic <laughs>